This is the first in a series of eight videos we are offering as a free resource to support men receiving hormone therapy for prostate cancer. I am Louise Field, founder of Adore Your Pelvic Floor, and I'm joined by Mr. Rajiv Pillai, a consultant, urological and robotic surgeon who works at the Colchester and Southern Hospital for the NHS and also privately at the Oaks Hospital in Colchester. I feel to commence the whole series, we really should start from the beginning to find out more about the prostate and to hear about the signs and the symptoms with regards to what we should be aware of, information, possible screening and treatments and where we can actually gain patient support. So a big welcome to Mr. Pillai. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lois. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk. And, um, you know, I, I'm glad to be talking about uh, prostate and, and prostate enlargement and prostate cancer, which, which is a large part of my work. Absolutely. And we, we are really delighted to have you with us. Um, I think the very first question I would like to put forward, which we do get asked so often, particularly by the gentlemen we work with, is what exactly is the prostate? So prostate uh, is a walnut-shaped uh, organ in, in, uh, in a man which um, lies wedged between the bladder and the water pipe or the, or the urethra. It actually surrounds the urethra uh, at the beginning where it starts from the bladder. And it's, it's, it's important for some, um, it has got an important function, especially when, when men are in their prime. Okay, that, and, and what is the function with regards to the prostate? So, uh, so the prostate um, produces um, some, some secretions of fluid, which is quite important and it nourishes the sperms and therefore has a big role to play in fertility. But as, as men get older, obviously this function is less important and, and, they, and therefore they, um, it's, it's after a particular age, their function uh, is not as important as they, it was when they're younger. Okay, so enlargement, does this happen to all men? Um, it's enlargement of prostate is in inevitable. So as as um, as you, as you as men grow older, the prostate tend to enlarge, and in in some cases they can develop foci of cancer cells. Um, so this is the the commonest thing that happens is enlargement, and the second commonest thing that happens is is cancer of the prostate. But having said that, you know not all enlargement produces symptoms, and sometimes the prostate might be very minimally enlarged, but they can still produce a lot of symptoms. Oh, okay, that, that's really interesting. Um, so what are the symptoms to indicate when we actually should approach the GP? Yeah, so, so there is quite, quite a, a variety of symptoms that, that can happen as your prostate enlarges. Some of them are storage or what we call as irritative symptoms, such as increased urinary frequency, both at day and night. People might get some urgency uh, of um, urgency for urination. Some people get um, what we call as voiding symptoms or flow symptoms, where they find that the flow might be slow, they, it might become weak. Uh, they might dribble afterwards after they've finished uh, urinating. Uh, so it could produ produce a variety of symptoms. And, and as the prostate enlarges, these symptoms could get worse. Okay, okay, that's really interesting. Um, so how do those symptoms differ from prostate cancer? So interestingly, um, some of the early prostate cancers don't produce any symptoms. In fact, most early and localized prostate cancers don't produce any symptoms. And the symptoms are usually produced by enlarged prostate and because of which the patient goes to the GP and the GP then tends to offer them screening tests for prostate cancer. So large, you know, the, a lot of patients who are diagnosed with prostate cancer generally don't get any symptoms from prostate cancer, but they usually get symptoms from enlarged prostate. In the later stages of cancer, prostate cancer, 
they might get symptoms such as you know worsening of the urinary symptoms or in in advanced cases they might get some bone pain weight loss and uh, they might get uh, symptoms from a poor kidney function so so but these are all in the advanced cases so 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 the as i just to summarize early prostate cancer don't cause any symptoms but in the later stages they can okay okay so it's rather silent yes yes okay um how do we screen for prostate cancer so um the the most common test for screening which which is easily available and used across it's uh, across the world is a simple blood test called a PSA which is the prostate specific antigen it's a protein produced by the prostate and it's detected on a blood test and that's that's the commonest test which the gps often tend to do the and the patient presents to them with some symptoms from prostate enlargement if if the blood test is abnormal then they get a referral to a specialist or urologist and then they then to undergo further tests such as mri scans and some of these patients might then end up needing prostate biopsies to diagnose the cancer okay um i've heard of um a partial prostate removal can you explain more so partial prostate removal is um generally um a surgical procedure used to remove an enlarged enlarged prostate and it's usually used for benign prostate enlargements it's not used for cancer but it is generally used for benign prostate enlargements and there are various types of uh, pr- partial prostate removal you can use electric current to remove them you can use laser which is quite popular and very common and and that, and it can be used for cancer patients but generally is not a curative treatment option it's used to reduce the symptoms or it's used to reduce the size of the prostate prior to some other treatment for cancer okay so how about the aftercare with that so it's it's usually a, what we call as a endoscopic surgery and uh, patients tend to um uh, stay in the hospital for a for one or two days the recovery at home is few weeks they tend to have a catheter in the first couple of days after the procedure but once when they go home most people don't need a catheter for these surgeries and the, and the recovery as i said is a it's a few weeks they can tend they tend to often have uh, some irritative bladder symptoms when they're recovering from this operation like frequency or urgency they might get a bit of blood in the urine occasionally some patients are prone to water infection so but as i said the recovery is a matter of few weeks um yeah okay that, that's wonderful now when is a radical prostatectomy required and what is the after care there including physio support yes yeah, so so radical prostatectomy is uh, or total removal of the prostate for cancer is a totally different ball game as opposed to partial removal for benign enlargement it's a much bigger operation um it's it's as i said it's done for prostate cancer especially the cancer localized to the prostate it's a curative treatment for prostate cancer and 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 the gold standard nowadays uh for for uh, prost radical prostatectomy is is a robotic surgery which means you're doing a very precise surgery uh, minimally invasive surgery using the help of a robot and and the recovery as you can imagine is slightly more uh, uh prolonged than a, than a simple or partial prostate removal uh, the patient um the hospital stay is not very different so they tend to stay in for a day or two in the hospital but they do go home with a catheter for a few days and the catheter then comes out after a week or so the recovery can take up to 4 to 6 weeks although some people recover earlier because of the minimal invasive nature of the surgery and as you rightly pointed out physiotherapy to um strengthen the pelvic floor muscles is quite an important part of of the recovery we often tend to encourage the patients to start the physiotherapy before the surgery and then once the catheter comes out they continue with that and that's quite very important in the continence recovery 
which is an important fun functional outcome from the operation. That, that is, um, that's really good to hear because we work with lots of physios and and that's that is just everything we we believe and, and that's really good to hear that from you um so why is the hormone treatment used and, and what is the aim of hormone treatment which is what our series is also really focused on yeah so hormone uh treatment uh, is um quite, quite an important part of prostate cancer treatment it's it's used when the patients uh are not choosing surgery. So it's, it's generally not used with surgery. Um, so there are two, two scenarios where people uh, are started on hormonal treatment. One scenario is where the cancer is advanced or the, the cancer has gone outside the prostate and they get started on the hormonal treatment to control the progression of the cancer. And that might be a treatment on its own or in some lot of cases it's given along with some other systemic treatment like chemotherapy or some other medical therapy. The second scenario where we use hormonal treatment is where the patient's being um, treated with radiotherapy. So as a part of that, patients get started on hormonal treatment first, and then in a few months time, they then go on to have radiotherapy. And then some people stop the hormonal treatment after, soon after radiotherapy, whereas in some cases or high-risk cases, they might continue the hormones for two or three years after radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so are there side effects? Um, definitely there are, there are side effects associated with hormonal treatment. The hormones, the, the action of the hormones to, is to reduce the level of testosterone or inhibit the action of testosterone, which is a male hormone. So if you cut down the testosterone in your body, you can imagine there, there will be lots of side effects and, and what we call as menopausal kind of side effects in men. And um, they, these are night sweats, hot flushes. Uh, people can often feel weak, lethargic, tired. Um, and, and, and sometimes they can put on weight in the sort of medium to long term, especially deposit fat around the waist. Um, and in the long term, the, these, the hormonal treatment can also weaken your bones. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is exactly why we've got these videos going um, to cover those side effects, and um, I'll I'll go over those subjects as we finish. I think what would be a really nice way to um, finish here is to ask you where where do you recommend patient can get support? So if if the patients um, are being treated on the NHS. Um, you hospital, you get support. Obviously, you see the uh, specialist, um, uh, urologist, and they have a team of cancer nurse specialists who are quite integral to the, the care of the patients. And, and, and the patients do get a lot of uh, supporting literature when they're diagnosed and when they're started on hormonal treatment uh, or any cancer, prostate cancer treatment. In the community, obviously, you have the Macmillan support team and 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 you um, a lot of patients I do recommend to go through uh, to look at the Prostate Cancer UK website, which is actually quite a fantastic website, and and there's a lot of information on there. Lovely, and we're going to put the link of them in the um, description on the video as well. Thank you. Um, no, thank you. Um, so yes, um, it is a massive thank you to you. Thank, I really do appreciate your time and your support in enabling us to also offer these information videos. Um, after your video, the next one we're going to have will be the subject, let's talk about sex, and that will be with Debbie Dillon, who is a men's and women's public health physio. Um, she is also involved with the rehab and um, prehab and a rehab program um, at a hospital. Um, and then our video following that will be about pelvic floor rehab. Again, by Debbie Dillon, we then are covering nutrition with Nigel Denby from Hardy Street. He's a dietitian that is um, absolutely top in his field. So that will be really interesting. We're having one as well from Rachel Willett, who's a specialist therapist about self-worth and confidence, because I think confidence with regards to hormone therapy can um, need support as well. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, and as you mentioned about the strength for bones, um, it's, it's very important to support bone strength. So we have um, the wonderful Mr. Um, Bill Taylor there. He's a men's pelvic health physio. Again, a specialist and top expert within the field. We're so lucky with the experts we've got within these videos. They are all absolutely A1. Um, we also then have um, Rob Filmer, who is a Pilates expert, and he's going to be looking at heart health and joint health. Um, and um, sorry, Rob is doing joint health but for heart health we have Rebecca McDonald and she also works in cancer rehab um, as a coach as well as in the fitness industry um, so we've got a really fantastic team of experts to support men who are receiving hormone therapy and thank you for starting us off Rajay. thank you I really thank, do appreciate it thank you thank you very much and all the best oh thank you very much goodbye now bye